Hey everybody, welcome back. So we got a lot of updates to talk about today. For anybody that's been following the situation down in Florida, there's been some new body cam footage that's come available. There's a Florida FWC meeting that's coming up in May. Um, we're going to look at the details on that. I'm going to provide you guys with all the links to where you can go and read through all that stuff yourself. There's also a couple alerts coming out from U.S. Arc National. Uh, some important stuff that we need to... Um, to definitely have our eyes on and be getting some participation generated on that so there's a lot of stuff going on so for those of you guys that may not follow a lot of this and you don't know exactly what this stuff means as far as what us arc does for the regulation and finding it and making everybody aware of it we're going to look at that and i'm going to kind of give you guys the tools to research that stuff yourself and go on and see exactly what's going on so we've got a lot of stuff to go over I'm going to definitely need you guys to stick around with me today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So the very first and the most pressing thing that we need to discuss is the meeting that's going on down in Florida. Now we know everybody's not gonna be able to make it. There's a lot of us from out of state. Uh, there's also a lot of keepers and a lot of folks that are gonna be in Florida. I've even talked with folks from up in Michigan in that area that are considering making the drive down there uh, just so they can be there at this, this meeting. So regarding the meeting down there in Florida on May 10th and 11th, it's of course gonna be a two day, two day um, conference down there. A lot of the stuff that they're going to be talking about is fisheries. Um, you know, as soon as everybody gets together down there, they're going to spend the first little bit doing their little invocations and breaking their arms, patting each other on the back for doing such a good job. Um, and the first day, it looks like the only reptile-related stuff they're going to be doing is the uh, Operation Viper update. Um, it's actually a memo in here. It looks like there's a summary memo right here that you guys can read in reference to that. Um, and of course, more fishery stuff. As you move into the second day, there's going to be, um, it looks like the first thing they're going to hit is the non-native fish and wildlife. Um, this is the part that we really need to pay attention to. If you can only make it down there for one day, I would recommend going on the second day on the 11th because this is where um, all of this is going to come in. So they've got a little bit of time devoted to that. And then uh, they've got stuff that's not on the agenda that can be addressed later. They've got some land acquisition stuff going on. So this is what the agenda looks like for down there. Um, the address and everything, all that stuff's going to be listed down in the description of the video. All the links to this stuff is going to be down in the description of the video. So don't feel like you need to freeze and pause and, and absorb all that stuff at once. Um, I'm going to have all this stuff out there for you guys to look at on your own when this video is over. Now... Before I go in and I summarize everything that's going on with this and make my suggestions for the commission, I want to show you guys the new footage that came out from these guys. It's starting to get him now. It's starting to bother him more. Yeah. Like the longer it's taking, it's starting yeah. to bother him. Because he's like, you know, everyone that you're killing, I made, I handmade by myself. Chris so. That's fine, but I'm just, just kind of tell you we're killing the dude's pets. Like he's upset, just. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Absolutely. Oh, All because right. we need. Who's next? I've done most of them. I know. No, I got yeah. it. I got it. All right. Now you guys can see right here, that guy in the blue shirt has got his hands on the tag, on that boa enclosure, and he's reading it right before they go in, open it up, and kill this animal that was illegal to be kept there. This is really important to pay attention to. You're here. Chris? So, hey, you need the keys for all these. But to unlock all these, you gotta like, just, just undo all the locks. Uh, not yet, Let's tap well, them on this remember, this is the one that struck it. They've had all this time yeah. trying to get the enclosure open, Ready? trying to get in, get the animal okay. out. It's a okay. high level. We're coming There's in. No okay. way any educated person could confuse this animal for anything other than what it is. You want to let him out and grab it? I want him to go that way a little more. <laughs> but I'm not going to let him out. Okay. 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 Ok
I'm saying if we can coast him that that's what I'm saying give him a chance to come out a little bit you might be able to get him on the way out okay Now, I'm not going to show all of the details about them putting the animal down on the floor and killing it. But I do want to show as this animal comes out, it's crystal clear that that's a bull. And this is about a minute later after they killed no, that animal. Special. And now... Just give it a minute. One of the guys is realizing what the other guy should have pointed out when he was reading that card. And if that was an animal that was legal to be kept, it shouldn't have been killed. And now these guys are starting to move into damage control mode. Okay. Look at this. This guy is actually about to put that dead snake right back in the enclosure Still he pulled it out of Just before the guy tells him to put it in the trash can. Oh man, because it's such a long day, dude. We just met, like made a mistake. but it's pregnant with like a hybrid that's really expensive. And it's not his, it's the other guys, it's the partners, and you know, just one of those. Yeah, like a fucking nightmare. It happens. So of course, I didn't play all of the footage that was available. If you guys want to see more of it, uh, Nerd put out a really good video that's got a longer version of all of this on it. I uh, really encourage you guys to go check that out. I'm going to put the link in the description for that video as well so you guys can go and check that out. Um, but there's a couple real key points um, that people need to be addressing when we address FWC down in Florida. And one of which is getting some kind of compensation, some kind of punitive um, measures against the officers down there who killed a legal animal with a, a really high dollar value attached to it. Um, you know, you hear all kinds of different estimates. I've heard those babies would run from three to six thousand dollars a piece. Um, and you'll also notice in the video, the FWC guy is even calling it a hybrid. He doesn't even understand the difference between a morph and a hybrid. You know, they had a bat eater in their hands at one point, which is a hybrid that they killed. Um, but, and, and the FWC officer on there, he's like, well, what kind of snake is this? You know, these, these people are in positions in Florida where they don't know how to recognize snakes. You shouldn't have anything at all to do with animals in Florida ever. If you don't know the difference between a Burmese python, a boa, and a reticulated python, this is the easiest thing in the world for anybody that's got any familiarity with snakes at all. So down there at this commission meeting down in Florida, you know, what we need to be emphasizing is one, there needs to be some kind of consequences for them killing the wrong animal. That that animal is completely legal. There should be damages awarded. Now, another thing that we can address down there is the fact that, you know, these animals did not need to be killed. If the goal is to keep these animals out of Florida, if the goal is to keep them from developing invasive populations down there in Florida, then in the spirit of doing that, animals like this that are healthy, that are well socialized, that are bred into captivity, they, they needed to not force him to keep those animals in the state. If they don't want them in Florida, don't force somebody to keep them in Florida. You know, there's 30, what was there, 32, 34 animals there. I guarantee you that if I had 34 retics and berms in this house and put the word out that I wanted to give them away to a good home, they'd be gone in a day. I'd have more people responding to me than I would have animals. Um, so there were other options. 
and those other options definitely need to be um, need to be mentioned and you know we need to make sure that if they want to have the regulations down there they need to be humane they need to be reasonable um, what is that we figure that out through discussions discussions through with them and us um, you know we've got to have a word in this it, it can't all be just be dictated down um, so so that's something that we need to keep in mind and of course you know for those of you that go down to the meeting um, keep it civil um, the name calling things of that nature they don't do anything all they do is inflame and they will immediately make people stop listening to you so keep it professional we understand everybody's upset about this but let's address the things that you know there needs to be consequences for and let's address the things that need to be changed and they need to be um they need to be reworked with everybody's input and not just dictated uh from special interest groups uh, it's really important now a couple things really quick on us arc national if you guys go in and you pull up the us arc web page um, the very first thing that you see when you go into the us arc national web page is the alerts there's two recent alerts in here um you know they're chronologically and you know the first ones that you see are the last ones that were put on so there's one up in virginia and as you look at these things we really encourage everybody to go through and read through these things they give you the links to the legislation sometimes they'll give you a full readout of the legislation and stuff like that um, it gives you guys an opportunity to see the things that us arc is dealing with this is the alert for dennis in iowa again you can go in here click on the links find all of the information on it you can see the actual proposal in here and read through what the implications are for it guys even if you're not in denison iowa even if you're not in virginia even if you're not in florida involvement from all across the community makes such a huge difference because laws operate on precedence um if there's a precedence established meaning that you know these laws have been passed they've been ruled on in this state it's so much easier for other states to follow suit um, so it is really important that we all cooperate nationwide as these things come up and make sure that we're getting our voices heard to these people um, you know every piece of bad legislation that us arc manages to stop is one more piece of precedent that they prevent them from having that keeps that stuff from spreading it's one thing that a lot of people don't realize about what us arc does is all these pieces of legislation this is all stuff they've got to find on their own they're not broadcasting this stuff on the five o'clock news saying you know we're getting ready to take away all your animals um, you know even some of this stuff um you know years ago i was i was working with a um with a lobby organization and one of the pieces of legislation that they were fighting is that there was a timber salvage rider attached to the uh, aid for the Oklahoma City bombing. And essentially what this was is there was an aid package for the Oklahoma City bombing. And attached to that legislation was uh, a rider that opened up every national park in the country to logging operations under the guise of any tree that is vulnerable to any disease can be logged freely every tree on the planet is vulnerable to disease um so you know that's something that the organization i was with previously found and managed to get written out of it but it just goes to show how unscrupulous these things can be you know this is an aid package for a major terrorist event and they're trying to you know trying to sneak special interest stuff through um, so we really need to keep an eye on it and the way that we do that is by ensuring that we're back in us arc and us arc florida that their membership numbers are up that there's a lot of people behind them and we're helping them to finance the work that it requires to go through and find these little pieces of legislation in this huge mass of uh of paperwork that these state legislatures throw down on a regular basis um it's not an easy job and I really encourage everybody, you know, as soon as this video is over with, start digging through these links for yourself. Um, you know, one thing that you're going to find is that as you read through all these pieces of legislation, some of it's going to make sense. 
some of it's gonna seem fair you go down a couple lines there's something hidden in there that's like well you know th this could apply to anything uh, and you're gonna see other pieces of legislation that are just really brazen attempts to completely cut the animal community off the heels um, and that's one of the things that makes this so complicated is that you know US ARC, reasonable reptile keepers, we're not opposed to regulations. You know, some things need to be regulated. That's cool. They need to be reasonable and they need to not completely kill our ability to work with these animals. Uh, it's bad on so many levels. So I don't want to make it a terribly long video, but I made it as easy as I could for everybody to find everything that you need to find. Everything from US ARC, everything from US ARC Florida about this Florida committee meeting. All of this stuff is out there. All you guys got to do is sit down at your computer, read through it, you know, educate yourself on what's going on. And, you know, if you, especially if you're going to be going down there talking to the committee, you know, you need to be reading everything you can get your hands on so that you're going in there educated and you're not saying things that these guys can easily sleep on, sweep under the rug or make sure you're not saying anything, um, you know, throwing straw men arguments out at these guys that they can easily just brush away and make us look stupid uh, we need to know what we're talking about when we're talking with these guys so that's my point today um, you know everybody that's concerned about this make sure you're reading up on it let's get as many people as we can down to Florida represent professionally in that meeting of course get, get your US ARC your US ARC Florida membership I said the other day in a live stream, if you can afford to buy a rat and you've got the time to take it down and feed it to your snake, there's no excuse for you not to be able to get on and have a US ARC membership. If you're watching this and you keep any kind of pets at all, we strongly encourage you guys, get on board. These are the only organizations that are doing anything for us. You know, if you're talking sugar gliders, hedgehogs, prairie dogs, ferrets, rabbits, um, rodents, anything guys, you know, everybody gets affected by this stuff at one point or another. Um, just because it's not in your front yard right now doesn't mean it won't be in your front yard a week from now, a month or a year from now. So everybody that has a love for animals, that keeps, everybody needs to get involved. So please do that, and we will see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.